What's up guys? Today on the channel we have an update on Big 12 expansion. The teams that seem to be legitimate candidates right now from a veteran reporter and somebody who's covered the Big 12 for a long time. Plus an update on tortious interference, what that means, why the Big 12 might have a case, and how actually something they did in 2016 could really help them out on that front. I'm John Kurtz. Welcome into the channel. I talk college football every day here. Right now, that means conference realignment every day. I really try to give the Big 12 a voice when there's not much of one nationally for the league. Like and comment on the video in addition to subscribing. That all really helps me out a ton. And click the bell so you can get an alert every time that I come on or go live. Today, we go to Barry Trammell from the Oklahoman. He's a veteran columnist, longtime reporter and columnist who's been around the league forever and does a great job covering the league. So he points out a couple of things. Before we get to the expansion candidates, there's an update here on some of the legalities that are happening with tortious interference. You remember that claim from Bob Bowlesby that he directed toward ESPN after the OU SEC news broke and there was word of a plot to get the AAC to blow up the Big 12, to get ESPN out of money, all of that. Tortious interference. Okay, so the definition there, tortious interference occurs when a party intentionally damages a second party's contractual or business relationship with a third party causing economic harm. A Big 12 legal source has told Barry Trammell that the conference may well have recourse against ESPN. So here's an update on this. We have really not had much of one in a long time. It says, quote, this was all their grand design, the source said of ESPN. The caveat is, tortious interference is, quote, very hard to prove. Goes on to say, quote, it would be a big, big number, the money that would be involved there if you're able to prove it, and also, this legal source added, that's why, for example, the Big 12 did that so-called beauty contest in 2016. That was all about being sure that they don't get a tortious interference problem. Okay, so think back to that. In 2016, the Big 12 had all of those different schools formally apply as expansion candidates for the league. Well, they did that because in order to avoid a tortious interference case, you have to have the schools reaching out to you, the league, first. And that's why, like, Texas and Oklahoma have always made it very clear they reached out to the SEC first so that the SEC avoids any culpability right there. That's what the Big 12 did in 2016. And now the Big 12 can try to spin that back around and say, hey, this is how we've actually protected ourselves right now. If we had teams in 2021, well, all of these schools applied in 2016 already, so they had already expressed interest trying to cover CYA. Uh, CYA, basically, on a legal front. So the Big 12 had 12 finalists for expansion in 2016. It was Air Force, BYU, UCF, Cincinnati, Colorado State, Connecticut, Houston, Rice, South Florida, SMU, Temple, and Tulane. There were schools that did not make the list of finalists. Those were Arkansas State, Boise State, East Carolina, Memphis, New Mexico, Northern Illinois, San Diego State, and UNLV. It's a long, long list of schools that now you all have as, as potential options here in 2016 because they've already reached out to the Big 12 at one point in time expressing interest in membership. Now, Barry Trammell drops this note. This time around, he says the top contenders are expected to be BYU, Central Florida, Cincinnati, Houston, Boise State, SMU, and Memphis. So pay attention to that because Barry Trammell, as I said, is very connected around the league. He is somebody that would know uh, what the legitimate thought process is going on behind closed doors in the league. So there are a couple things that stand out there to me. One, the fact that SMU makes the list is surprising. I said in that live chat, I didn't think a second uh, school that is smaller in terms of just its stature in the college football world from the DFW market would really make a lot of sense for the league. And you're not expanding a footprint in Texas. You're not expanding into a new market in Texas. That didn't make a ton of sense to me, but apparently there is more traction than I thought or gave SMU credit for. Now, the other interesting one to me here is Houston, because Max Olson of The Athletic had reported recently that Houston may be iffy with the Big 12 because of not just some pushback from Texas schools within the league, but also because of how Houston handled itself in that process in 2016, where there was grumbling at the end about feeling used by the Big 12 in that process in 2016, feeling used to wind up with the pro rata clause and to wind up with the championship game that got everybody more money. Felt like a pawn in that whole scheme, did Houston. But now it makes Barry Trammell's list. So it would seem that that's probably still going to be an option that's legitimately on the table. And if you are a Houston fan, he did go on to elaborate some more here and said the schools who applied for Big 12 membership in 2016 felt used, particularly the University of Houston, whose officials were quite vocal in their Big 12 criticism. 
Will that harm the Cougars now? Not necessarily. These are difficult times for the Big 12. If Houston makes the most financial sense for expansion, bygones will be bygones. I think that's very true. And I, I, one, I think that's not just opinion from Barry Trammell. I think that's going to be backed up by a little bit of something, knowing his track record. And two, I do agree with him and probably should have further followed that on the Houston front when I even saw it from Max Olson because it's the same kind of concept and principle as BYU. Right, BYU, there was pushback in 2016 from the LGBTQ groups. I think a lot of people just have a, a natural distaste for adding BYU to the league. I certainly get that sense from many people throughout the Big 12. But right now, desperate times call for desperate measures. And TV execs are saying, and TV consultants are saying, hey, BYU would actually add value to your TV contract. So you're in a position where you're pretty desperate here at this point. That will change the calculus on things, much as it seems to be doing the same for Houston, even if people were unhappy with them last time. So there's a bit of an update on expansion candidates for the Big 12 and where things may be headed from Barry Trammell of the Oklahoman. I'm talking conference realignment every day on this channel right now. Going to be college football talk every day on this channel throughout college football season as well. Really trying to give the Big 12 a voice right now because there's not much of one nationally. Please do subscribe to the channel if you have not, and also like and comment on the video at all really does help me out. You can also follow me on Twitter for up-to-the-minute updates at JL Kurtz. You can follow me on Instagram and TikTok at John Kurtz Show. And you can find more links to my work, podcast, daily radio show, etc. in the description of this video. Thanks a lot, guys, for tuning in, and I will talk to you soon.